Hello my lovelies! My name's Gilbert Dovalian and the plan for today is to cover five of the most basic and useful hand stitches, the ones that everyone should have in their sewing repertoire, whether you sew by machine mostly or not. If you're hand sewing, these are the ones that you're most likely going to be used as construction techniques, and if you're sewing by machine, these are going to be your finishing techniques, the ones that you use to elevate your sewing to that next level. And by the end of this, if you follow along, you should have a lovely little needle book to keep your needles in. This video was produced to be a part of CoCovid, the Costube community's response to the lack of conventions in this year of our Lord 2020, thanks to the Great Plague. It was also originally written to be a workshop for a convention that I was meant to be attending on the weekend that this is all happening, so originally it was written for me to be able to go around people and help them out in person. Obviously, that is not an option at the moment. But what I have tried to do is make it a sew along so that you at home can get all your items together and sew along in time to the video. I realise that the timings might be off because unfortunately I'm not there to help and I wish I was but I'm not. But I've tried to make it as easy as possible to sew along. If you do need to pause it to catch up with something then do it. If there's bits that you need to finish up later I've given advice on which things can be finished after the video as well, which things might take longer than the video and that you might want to finish up afterwards. But in general I've tried to make it as sew along friendly as possible. I will also be there on the side during the premiere. If you're watching this after the premiere, if you want to drop a comment down below, then I will get back to you as soon as I can. I will also be available during the weekend on the Discord for questions, and both during the weekend and later on Instagram. But for both of those platforms, I really recommend you tag me because I can't promise that I will be able to see your comments otherwise. But either way, feel free to show your work. I would love to see what people make. And again, if you tag me, I will be trying to repost as many of them as possible. So feel free to show me what you've done. There's also going to be a sequel to this video coming out on Saturday. So if you want to see some more embroidery type techniques, then hang around for that one. Don't literally hang around because that's a couple of days, but stick, come back for that one and I will walk you through some embroidery ones for that. If you're watching this in the future, then that's already up, so why don't you check it out afterwards? It's linked down below and above. And obviously, some of these stitches you might already know. So I've tried to include challenges for those of you who've already encountered these stitches, so it's going to be interesting to people of all levels. So hopefully you saw beforehand that I've got a list listed down below with all of the items that you'll need for this video if you want to follow along with the needle book. If you haven't, get running, they're down below. That's obviously just if you want to join in for the needle book. If you just want to sew along, then just grab yourself a piece of non-stretch fabric and just sew along. You're also going to need a needle, some thread, and some thread scissors. If you already have a thimble, then you should use that. And if you have thread conditioner or wax that you want to use, then feel free to use those as well. And while you put all of that together, if you haven't already, or get it all prepared, I'm just going to give you some of my top tips for hand sewing, because, well, you can never do with enough top tips, right? So when it comes to needles, I really often get asked which ones I like. I personally like to go for something quite short and quite sharp, and I specifically look for something that's got as small of an eye as I can get away with. Obviously this very much depends on what thread you're using, and if you have a look at the collection of needles that I've been using on my trunk hose, you can see the massive amount of variation here. But be warned, just like machine needles, hand sewing needles do get blunt. There's nothing like when you've been sewing along happily on something, you switch out a needle and suddenly your sewing speed doubles because the needle is suddenly going through your material like butter. Change your needles regularly. When you're cutting thread for hand sewing, the thing you need to be aware of is that the shorter it is, the less tangled it's going to get. My advice here is to measure it out against your forearm, just short of twice. 
This means that when it's threaded, you should be able to maintain a good tension on it and keep it from tangling too much. Remember to have, use thread scissors if you have them. The cleaner the cut, the easier it's gonna to be to thread it. So once your needle is threaded, you're gonna to want to pull a significant proportion of that tail through. You don't want it in the middle of your thread, obviously, but the closer it is to the end of your thread, the more likely that you're gonna keep pulling it off and off and off. So the further along you can have it, the better it will be. You just need to make sure to keep an eye on it as you're sewing so that you don't end up sewing double. It's very easy to adjust the length of it as you're sewing. So you really just, just get used to keeping an eye on it and you'll start to do it automatically as you go along. If you're having difficulty threading your thread, there's quite a lot of things out there that can give you a hand. If you've conditioned or waxed your thread, then you might find it that it's easier than just plain thread. Personally, I'm pretty gross. If I am doing something for myself, I will always lick the thread because you know what, it's there and I'm lazy. But I realize that other people don't like that, so I don't do it on things that I'm doing for other people. It works though, that's the issue. The other option that I've seen peddled around is to use hairspray, and this does work apparently. The problem with it is, is that you need to keep hairspray lying around and you're gonna get hairspray on everything. If you're still having difficulties, don't despair. There are tools that can help you and there's absolutely no shame in using them. And I will repeat that until the cows come home. They are there to help you. Do not ever feel ashamed of using something that's there to help you. These little ones that you normally get in sewing kits work by threading the thread through the loop and then pushing the loop through the eye, which will allow you to pull it through. You can also get automatic threaders, which work on essentially the same basis, but will also hold the needle in place for you. So if you're still having difficulties, that might be a thing to look into as well. Now, I said at the beginning of this that a thimble isn't a necessity, but if you are sewing long-term, a thimble is a necessity. And yes, I have been swayed over to the dark side by this. I used to only use one when I needed one, but after six months of hand sewing, I have been completely run over. I always use a thimble now, even when I'm not sewing on a zero thel. So I have pretty chunky fingers, you may have noticed. Personally, I get on best with a leather thimble because I can make that myself. It fits perfectly to my hand but you can get metal adjustable ones, you can buy leather ones, you can get plastic adjustable ones, I've used those before but I didn't get on with those, but you might like those. If you're looking for a solid thimble, one that isn't adjustable, you should really be doing it in person because a thimble needs to fit right for it to be useful. So it needs to stay on your finger without falling off. Obviously you don't want it too tight, but it shouldn't fall off. So you will want to go and try some on. So I guess the best place to look for something like that is honestly probably antique stores or markets or that sort of thing where they might have antique metal ones that you can try on. So your thimble goes on your middle finger on the hand that you are sewing with and that's because that's what you use to push the needle through your material and the back of the needle can be just as sharp as the front of the needle and certainly when you're putting that amount of pressure on it, it will go through the skin. So it's not there to protect the hand that you're sewing to. You're gonna end up stabbing that anyway. That's just a fact of life. This is to protect the back of your thimble where you're going to be repeatedly pushing against the needle. My last tip before we get started is to always mark out your sewing line. I personally am as good at sewing straight lines as I am at anything straight in general, so I always mark it out if I can. I realize that felt is not the best project for this, so I do apologize for that, it is gonna make it a bit difficult for you, but do try and mark out a line, it will just make your line so much straighter, it will make everything so much easier if you're not trying to concentrate on doing a straight line, as well as wondering where to do your stitches and getting used to doing the stitches themselves. Personally, I avoid using chalk on anything that I'm gonna be handling a lot, and hand sewing, you will be handling a lot. So I try and go for either a removable pen or for a watercolor pencil, which if you guys have been around for a while, you might know that that is always my go-to when marking things. Just always be sure to double check anything before you use it for the first time on any given material. And so with all of that out of the way, I hope you've got everything ready. And when you're ready, let's get started with the sewing. The first stitch I want to walk you through is the most basic and simple one of all, but it's so important to be confident in it. It is, of course, the running or straight stitch, and we're going to be using it to attach a pocket and some bars to the pages of the book. 
Now, if you've sewn at all, you will know this one. So if you've already had a go with it, as I walk the others through it, I'm challenging you to see how small and even you can make your stitches. Consider it a warm-up challenge. So, the running stitch is literally needle into the fabric, needle out of the fabric. You're weaving your needle and thread through the material, leaving a dashed line on either side. Secure your thread first. I always knot mine directly to the fabric, but if you want to knot the end of your thread for practice, please do. Then push your needle through the fabric and out the other side. Move along a short space, then push your needle through the back. Then leave another gap, the same length as before, and rinse and repeat until you reach the end of your line. Once you're feeling more confident in it, you can do the in and out stitch at the same time by manipulating the needle around the fabric. Slide the needle through the top side and then angle it back up towards the fabric and out. And then again, through the front and then angled up and up through the back. You can upgrade again by lining up several stitches on the needle at once. Be careful when doing this, the thread likes to get tangled up, but once you get the hang of it, this should go much quicker. Running stitch is a very simple stitch but extremely useful. It's strong enough for seams if your stitches are small enough, or if you use very long stitches then it becomes a basting stitch for roughly holding things together before you sew them properly. It's also handy for a lot of finishing techniques like understitching and can be used decoratively with a thick contrasting thread.
tie it off at the end by passing the needle through the fabric and then knotting it. The second stitch we're going to tackle is back stitch, and we're going to use it on the other set of pages to attach two flaps to put needles through. If you already know this stitch, my challenge to you is to try and get your stitches as small and as neat as possible. See if you can get a perfect straight line on the back as well. Back stitch starts off very similar to running stitch, but starts half a stitch length away from the end of your seam. Push the needle through from the back, and then take that half stitch length backwards back to the start of the seam and push it through there. Then come forward again, this time a full stitch length, and come up through the fabric there. Now you should have a half stitch on the front and a full one on the back. Next, push the needle through the point where your first stitch came up through the fabric, move forward one stitch length on the back again, and then come back through. and rinse and repeat. Each backward stitch locks the stitches into place, making this a stronger stitch than running stitch, so this is a great stitch for any seam that will take a lot of strain. Once you're feeling more confident with it, you can start doing the stitches in one go again, in exactly the same way as the running stitch. Push your needle through to the back, then angle it up to come out the front, then take a half stitch back and start again. Obviously you can't stack these stitches so they are a bit slower than running stitches, but that's the payoff for a stronger stitch. You can combine the running stitch and back stitch if you do a couple of stitches in running stitch and then put in one back stitch before going back to running stitch for a few stitches, another back stitch and so on. This locks your running stitches into place every time you do a back stitch, giving them a bit more strength.
Now, for the next step, we're going to bind the two pages together. So if you haven't finished up sewing all the pockets, bars and flaps you want on your pages, take a moment to pause this video and come back when they're done. And now that you're ready, let's get on with blanket stitch. Like I said, we're going to use this to bind the pages together, so you might want to pin them together to hold them in place. Start near the centre and try and get past the centre on the other side. As long as you do this, you'll be able to finish later if you don't finish in time with the video. And if you've already tried the stitch out, challenge yourself to see how precisely you can do your spacing all the way around, front and back. Start your blanket stitch by slipping your needle between the two layers and then coming out on one side, a little bit down from the edge of the fabric. Then take your needle back out to the other side of your fabric and push it through the first stitch. Don't pull it completely tight yet, leave a little loop of thread loose and pass your needle through it before pulling it tight. That's your first stitch done. Now move on a little way and push your needle through in the same direction as before. So I went from back to front, so I'm going to do this again. You also want to be the same distance away from the edge of the fabric as before. Again, don't pull the thread tight, leave a loop and pass your needle through it first. Now it's beginning to take shape, so keep going. Try and keep your stitches an even distance apart, as well as an even distance from the edge of the fabric. This can be a decorative stitch as much as a constructive one. As you can see, I chose to use a contrasting thread for mine to make it stand out. It can also be used to finish off seams, as you can see it gives that little bit of protection to them, sort of in the same way that a serger would. When you reach a corner, I personally always try and pace it out so there's a stitch right in the centre, but I know some people like to do one on either side of it. Whichever you prefer, keep an eye on your stitch length as you approach so you can space it out nicely and keep it looking even. And if you run out of thread, don't panic. Tie off your last stitch, then do the first stitch over the last one the same way that you started before so that there isn't a break in the stitches.
Now, like I said, as long as you've covered both center points, we can continue. But if you need a little while longer, pause the video again before continuing. For our next stitch, we're going to tackle the infamous whip stitch. For this stitch, you need a rolled edge. So we're going to make ourselves a cover for our needle book by wrapping our large piece of fabric around the smaller piece. Place it in the middle and pin it down if necessary. Then fold one side down to meet the smaller piece. And then again, so that the second fold is exactly over the edge of the smaller piece. Pin that in place and then continue. For the corners, first fold in the tip into the tip of the smaller piece, then trim it off on the fold. Then fold it over so the tip of the smaller piece is under the fold. From here, when you fold in the edges, they should meet up neatly in the middle to make a nice neat corner. Pause this video for a moment if you need to get all the edges folded into place. Now that you have your folded edge, you can begin with your whip stitch. Once again, focus on covering the center on both sides because as long as they are done, you can continue and come back to finish the rest later. Start between the layers again, pushing your needle forward through the folded edge. Once that's secured, take it back to the fabric underneath and slide your needle under as little as possible. The more precise you can be about this, the neater it's going to be and the less it's gonna show through on the outside. But you also need to make sure that you've taken enough to secure the stitch. If you're sewing the book, then you have an extra layer of fabric between you and the front, so you don't need to be as precise unless you've sewn this stitch before, in which case your challenge is to focus on only picking up one single thread. If you're sewing a sampler, turn the fabric over to check how much of your thread is showing on the reverse if you need to, until you get the hang of it. Once you have your thread caught up on your needle, slide it through the folded layers again, and then keep at it. Move forward a stitch length, take up a thread, slide the needle through the folded layers, and keep going. When you reach the corners, do a couple of stitches through each side to hold them in place. Then slide your needle through the layers of the fabric, making sure it doesn't poke through the front, back to where you left off. And if you run out of thread, secure it to the folded edge, then start again exactly as you started originally.
And as long as you've covered on both center points, we can move on to the last stitch we're going to cover, Holbein or double running stitch. As the name suggests, this is an alteration on running stitch, and like the blanket stitch, it can be used both decoratively and in construction, which is why I've changed to embroidery floss. We're going to use it to sew the pages to the cover, so I recommend you draw a line down the centre of both, on the inside of the pages and on the outside of the cover. This stitch starts exactly the same as a running stitch. Sew a running stitch down the entire length of the seam. Focus on keeping it even and neat on both sides. When you reach the end of the seam, the fun begins. Take your needle and go backwards like we did for back stitch, but for a full stitch, passing it through where the original stitch went through the fabric. Make sure it lines up on both the front and the back. Pull it through and then continue to backtrack over your stitches, turning your fabric over so you can check that each stitch is placed precisely. This will leave you with a sturdy seam that forms a single solid line on both sides. This gives it the advantage over backstitch in places where both sides are visible as the back side of backstitch has the thread overlapping so it doesn't look as tidy, but unlike running stitch it still has that solid seam that looks so satisfying. This is what was used for Tudor blackwork embroidery most of the time, so that the front and the back would both match nicely. So the name Holbein Stitch comes from the painter from that period, who has a lot of examples of it in his work.
When you reach the end, you can fasten that off and then your book is in one piece. The only thing left to do is to secure it and I'm not counting these as a stitch that I'm teaching you because honestly, they're pretty slapdash. All I do is make sure that my thread is secured with a few knots, then pass it through the button, whether it's a shank button or not, enough times that it doesn't move around. Shank buttons are a bit trickier because they move around more, but they do work better for something like this because they give more space to slip the elastic around. Which is the next step? Make a loop with your elastic by either tying it off if it's thin enough, or with a few stitches if not, and secure it to the other side of your book than your button, taking care that your stitches don't go through to the front. Because mine was fairly thick, I folded it over and whip stitched it down. If yours is thin enough to knot, I would knot it again to make a second loop and secure that to the inside. If you're doing this, stitch completely over the elastic, passing the needle over the top of it, and then through the fabric and out the other side, then bringing it over and doing another stitch close to the first, going through again and so on until it's secured.
And if you managed to follow all of that, congratulations! You now either have your first little sampler or perhaps a little needle book that looks a little something like this. Please don't finish if you still have a couple of little bits to finish off or if it looks a bit rough. Hand sewing is something that only gets better with practice. The more you do, the quicker and more efficient your stitches are going to be and the better they're going to look. The most important thing is to try and to keep on trying. Learn from your mistakes and learn from your practice and soon you're going to reach the level that you want to be at. And don't forget to show off your finished piece. Use the hashtag CoCoVid and tag me in them at Dorfalion because I want to see as many of them as possible so that I can repost and comment on them so that everyone can see your hard work. For those of you who are playing the badge game for CocoVid, if you are watching this on CocoVid weekend, I have two badges for you. First of all, to everyone who's watched this video, here is a badge for you to show that you were here for this panel and that you joined in. Thank you for your attention, I really appreciate it. And for those of you who this is your first finished piece of hand sewing, here is one specially for you. Obviously I can't regulate this, but please regulate yourself. If you consider this to be your first piece of hand sewing, this is a badge specially for you, so you can show off that you have taken your first steps into hand sewing. Congratulations. If you're not sure how to play along, all of the instructions are in the PDF, the CocoVid program, which is linked down below. So have a look in there and that should walk you through through the steps to collect those badges. And that's all folks. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope that you learned something. As I said earlier, I'm going to be available in the comments for questions or you can tag me on Instagram. If you're here during the weekend of CocoVid, I will also be around on the Discord. But on Instagram and Discord, please tag me because I cannot guarantee that I will see your question otherwise. Whether you're watching this during CocoVid weekend or later, I hope you're having fun watching all the videos. There are playlists linked down below, so if you want to continue watching, you're more than welcome to. There are plenty of videos to choose from. And once again, I would like to remind you that there will be a sequel to this coming out on Saturday, the same time, 7 o'clock Central European time or 1 o'clock Eastern Standard time, and on Friday at 8 o'clock European time or 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, I will be taking part in the panel on Snappy Dragon's channel on disabilities in costuming, so I hope to see you there for both of those, unless you're watching this in the future, in which case I hope you go back and watch them anyway. Stay safe, stay sensible, and I shall see you again very shortly. Bye!